Hello, welcome to the March Not Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, I'm gonna cover how to hack satellites legally. Legally, guys, I do not want any negative or criminal behavior. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So cyber decks are custom built portable computers often used by hobbyists and researchers for various technical projects. For satellite related applications, they can be used to, number one, track and monitor satellites legally using software like G-Predict. Two, receive and decode weather satellite imagery using tools like G-O-E-S tools and WX2IMG. Three, perform software-defined radio SDR experiments to receive unencrypted satellite signals using applications like GQRX. Number four, control motorized satellite dishes for aiming and tracking purposes. Number five, analyze publicly available satellite data for research or educational purposes. So a typical satellite-focused cyber deck might include a compact computer running on you know a linux distribution like q4 os a rtl sdr radio for receiving signals uh, various filters and amplifiers to improve signal reception a satellite meter for signal strength measurements a specialized software for satellite tracking and data analysis so it's important to note that these activities should only involve receiving freely available unencrypted signals and public data any attempt to interfere with disrupt or access restricted satellite systems would be illegal and potentially dangerous so you know if you're interested in learning more about satellites and radio uh, astronomy legally and safely uh, you can join amateur radio clubs or participate in citizen science projects uh, you know that can provide valuable hands-on experience and knowledge please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button right now hit that subscribe button and the like button so now let's dive into what are the best tools for building a cyber deck for satellite hacking right so a set a cyber deck for legal satellite monitoring typically includes number one a compact computer like a raspberry pi 4b with a seven inch touchscreen number two software defined radio the sdr hardware such as the rtl sdr blog v3 radio three amplifiers and filters to improve signal reception for software like uh, GQRX for SDR, GPredict for uh, satellite tracking, and GOES tools, uh, or you know, or the WX2IMG for weather satellite imagery. So number five, a portable power source like a Voltiac V88 battery. Six, a rugged case such as a Pelican 1430 to protect the equipment. Seven, custom panels for organizing connections and ports. Eight, accessories like cables, adapters, and additional antennas. So for example, uh, the Gabe Emerson Space Deck V1 Cyber Deck uses a surplus police car computer uh, runner, Q4OS, which is a Debian-based Linux distribution, to operate various satellite monitoring tools. Hit, you know, so his updated version, Satellite Hacking Cyber Deck V2.0, uses a Raspberry Pi 4B in a custom design case. Now remember, these setups are for receiving and analyzing publicly available unencrypted satellite signals only. Okay, so, you know, they are used for educational purposes, weather satellite imagery reception, and amateur radio astronomy. Any attempt to interfere with or access restricted satellite systems would be illegal and potentially dangerous. So, how can you make your cyber deck more portable? Let's say you're on the go, right? You're on the go and you want to you wanna get to it. So, uh, consider these improvements, right? Number one, optimize power consumption, right? Use energy efficient components like a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W instead of a of larger boards. This will help extend battery life. Number two, choose a high capacity battery. Look for a portable battery pack with at least 20,000 mAh capacity. This could provide 15 plus hours of use for a low power setup. Number three, use a compact display. Opt for a smaller screen, such as a five inch or seven inch HDMI display to reduce overall size and power consumption. Four, minimize peripherals. Carefully select only essential components. For example, use a compact keyboard with an integrated trackpad instead of separate keyboard and mouse. Number five, choose a lightweight compact case. So consider using materials like expanded PVC foam board or 3D 
printed parts to create a custom lightweight enclosure. Number six, implement e efficient cooling. Use low power fans or passive cooling solutions to reduce power consumption and noise. Seven, optimize storage. Use a micro SD card or a compact SSD for a storage to save space and reduce power usage. Number eight, consider modular design. Use Velcro or other removable fasteners to allow easy swapping of components, making the system more versatile and easier to upgrade. Number nine, implement power management. Use a power distribution board or hub with individual switches to control power to different components, allowing you to conserve energy when certain features aren't needed. Number 10, explore alternative power sources, right? Consider adding a fold up solar panel for charging during outdoor use, making your cyber deck more self sufficient. So, by implementing these suggestions I'm talking to you about, you can create more compact, energy efficient and portable cyber deck that's suitable for various mobile applications. Now, there are some legal considerations that you need to take into account, right? When experimenting with satellite signals. So when experimenting with satellite signals, there are several important legal considerations to keep in mind. Number one, receiving versus transmitting. Generally, passive receiving uh, unencrypted satellite signals is legal in most jurisdictions. However, trans Transmitting signals to satellites without proper authorization is illegal and can result in severe penalties. Number two, licensing requirements. In many countries, you need a license to operate certain radio equipment, even for receiving satellite signals. For example, amateur radio operators often need licenses to legally receive signals from amateur radio satellites. Number three, encryption and access, right? Accessing encrypted satellite signals or paid services without authorization is illegal and may violate laws like the U.S. Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Number four, non-interference. It's illegal to intentionally interfere with or jam satellite signals. This is prohibited under international telecommunication reg uh, regulations and national laws. Number five, data privacy. If you intercept personal communications, even unintentionally, there may be legal implications related to privacy laws number six export controls some satellite communications equipment and software may be subject to export control regulations limiting their use or transfer internationally number seven specific satellite regulations so certain satellites like those used for weather monitoring have specific regulations governing their use and data distribution now here, it, here is a very important one. National security concerns. Number eight, experimenting with military or government satellite signals could raise national security issues and lead to legal consequences. So you're gonna wanna make sure you stay within legal boundaries when experimenting with satellite signals. Focus on receiving freely available unencrypted signals like those from weather satellites or amateur radio, or radio satellites, okay? So obtain you know, any necessary licenses for your radio equipment. Avoid any attempts to access encrypted or commercial satellite services without authorization. That's what I have for you today. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and like button. Hit that subscribe button and like button. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe. See you on the next video.